Apparently, we are live. <laughs> you feel the disclaimer up there? Yep, there we go. Yes, sir. Here we are. Once again, Art About Stuff. Thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. Uh, those who are tuning going to tune in later on live, those who are... Uh, who will tune in later on and check this out. You know what I mean? We try to bring in some interesting stuff. Uh, let's let's get into it. We were talking about earlier on, we were, we're MMA junkies. Right? Can't even, can't even so, try to deny it now. Right, right. So we were talking about um about how how in boxing um money has become such a factor that uh, how is that you that that you worried it? like pretty much like like talent is going out the window, the whole the whole sport is, is getting it's, fucked up. It's because it's, of the concern of, of, of money. Money, which is going to always be a part of it, and it has to be a part of it, but money has become too big. Which is well-earned. When it comes to combat sports, oh, yeah. it's well-earned fucking money. No doubt, no doubt. But but money is becoming or has become too big of a factor in the equation, and it's taken away from the, uh, from the purity of the sport and from like what it is. Now, the reason why I wanted to start off with that do you feel art is going the same way or has gone the same way? Has it been through moments that you know of in your studies? Cause you're, you're more, you're, you're, you're better versed in this than I am. Um, I think it, um, it has fluctuated. There've been periods where, yeah, it has happened. There are periods where, yeah, it has happened to like a gross level. And then there are periods where it's like, yo, it's just the art. It's just the art. But, um, unlike boxing, where like I feel, you know, it 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 kind of goes like this, but for the most part, in my opinion, it kind of stays up there. For art, it kind of sort of, you know, what I'm saying, it fluctuates between mattering too much and mattering at an appropriate level. As far as the money is concerned, right? As far as the money is concerned, yeah. Well, and, I and mean, then, I know and, there, and, there were times where it's like, okay, I mean, if if some new paint comes out you know what i mean some some ill fucking colors you're gonna you're gonna want to even if it's pencils prisma colors yeah i'm a prisma color junkie you know what i'm saying you go, oh shit i've never seen this color i want this joint you know so i i know for a time the the uh the not the ink but the the paints that were used you know were ex fucking expensive it was made by hand you know and yeah. from specific Beatles from specific parts of the world, and you needed money to get that. Yeah, and, and part of your and, nowadays, Prisma colors are not fifty cent fucking pencils. And part of your training back then, um, part of your apprent apprentice apprenticeship apprenticeship. Eso mismo. Uh, it was uh, tongue tied motherfucker. Part of that, part of that training was making your own shit. So like, yeah, I learn how to paint. Yeah, I learn how to do your three point perspective. Yo, learn how to make your own shade of red because I'm not doing this shit forever every time you need to do red. Like, it was part of the training, but nowadays people just buy it for the most part. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure because everything is, has changed. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, I remember how when, when we first figured out that if you freeze, I don't remember which one it is. Uh, you have two cans, right? You want to mix the, the yellow and blue to make it green. That's the easiest one. We all learned yeah. that in kindergarten. Okay, boom. I don't remember which one it is, but uh, whichever you take one of the two cans and you freeze it. You actually freeze the spray paint can, bro. Mm -hmm. And the other one, you got to put it upside down and take out all of the, the compressed air. Uh huh. Then with two chapas, you take two chapas pointing opposite ways. It has the mail that goes into the, the, the actual can, right? Sure, and you yeah. have one male looking up, one male looking down. Boom. And you take like a, a WD 40 tubito and you mm -hmm. put it in between the chapas. Oh, the and little, the the little straw. The... Both of them at the same time. Uh huh. It'll mix. And that was the shit when I mean, you can make your own fucking colors within graph. I've, uh, I've heard about that. I've never actually done it, but I have heard about that. Since it... I don't remember which one is which, I'm afraid of that motherfucker. Pop. I, have you ever seen a spray paint can pop? Yes. Holy pop? shit. Like 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 explode on you? No, like pause. <laughs> and it stays. It leaves one hell of a design on the floor. I will tell you that much. Yeah, I, I've seen one get like 
you know, punctured and it does that. But, uh, but yeah. So boom, topic of today, cameos. What do you guys understand as cameos? Uh, we're not talking about the little vanilla cookies that apparently are like a rarity here in, in, in Ohio. <laughs> I think I think like the majority of the cameos are actually sold in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to look on the exact facts on that one, but but I believe that the majority of the cameo cookies by Nabisco are actually sold in the Caribbean. I don't anyway, know. I, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about... Uh, the pretty jewelry, like Sandy says, you know, with the faces and all that stuff etched in, which would be a fantastic episode um, to find somebody who, who who knows about that. You know, because I think it's more than faces. Um, the faces are supposed to look a specific way if they're original or some shit like that. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about the group that, that sings just like Candy. <laughs> That's not what we're doing. When we're talking about cameos, let me see. I found a, a good small def, uh, short definition here. A mm -hmm. cameo is a small character part in a play or movie, usually portrayed by a distinguished actor or celebrity. Now, this is art about stuff. So how does this apply to art as far as, because acting is still art, but we're talking about putting paint on the canvas right <clears throat> exactly yeah so basically it um art is all about getting a reaction out of somebody if if i paint a thing and you feel disgusted your wife sandy feels elated such and such person feels pensive about it i'm getting different reactions maybe it's not the one i want to get specifically but the fact that i get a reaction is what makes art art if, if I get no reaction, Let, let's success. touch on that real quick. Cause that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, if, okay. You, you want to get a reaction from somebody. Yeah. Okay. It's not usually the reaction that you expected, but it's still a reaction. That's what art is. That's what defines art, right? Mm -hmm. It's something that gives a, that gets a reaction from somebody, an emotional or, or, or emo, you know, psychological reaction from somebody. Right. If it's not the reaction that you, the artist, was expecting or was working towards, do you say <clears throat> it? depends on the preference of the person and even their ego. Because I can paint a very. Oh, specific... I've known quite a few artists. Ego is on the top of the. It's a, It's above actually making the fucking art. It's all. It's almost. It's almost part of it. It, it feels like sometimes, but. But yeah, like it depends. It depends on the preference of the person and the ego. So I can paint something and specifically be like, I want people to feel inspired when they see this. That is a, that is specifically what I'm aiming for when I paint this thing. Now, if you see it and feel inspired, okay, for me, A+. plus. If the next person sees it and feels confused or something else that's not inspired, at that point, it just depends on me if it's a success or not, really. But but ultimately, generally speaking, and in my opinion, I feel that if it instill if it instills no reaction, negative or positive, then in that case, in my opinion, it failed. Is a failure. So you got to go back to the drawing board, like literally. No doubt, no doubt. So let's get into the cameos. So basically, piggybacking off of that, um, a cameo gives you a specific reaction so you're watching a a, a, Mar a marvel movie a captain america one of the iron man you see stan lee and it's like, exactly yeah it's, exactly and you're like oh i know that dude i know this old dude you know what i'm saying oh shit baby look it's stan lee oh my god you know what i'm saying so in every single thing it's it, it, movies and whatnot you, you get that same reaction oh look it's so and so i had no idea he was in that movie whatever so it's the same thing with, 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 with these examples we're going to talk about. So you're looking at, a, at the painting, you're whatever, whatever. And for, for people in the know or whatever, you look at a certain spot and you're like, is that so-and-so? Is that the artist? Oh, like, why he put himself in that? That's so weird. That's so crazy. So you basically get that same exact reaction. It's a game of where's Waldo, but with fine art that's extremely expensive and we'll never be able to afford it. But okay, if you put yourself in it, is it and it's your painting, is it still a cameo? I think so, because you're but it's your fucking painting. Usually cameos, at least when it comes to like movies and stuff like that, 
you know, cameos, you're in somebody else's shit. Exactly. Not your own. Well, not always, because a lot of cameos, the director is the person in the uh, in the movie. So, like, you see a scene, and there's a bunch of extras running, and one of them is doing this face, and you're like... like the dude with the glasses and the hangover. Exactly. And, like, and, okay. and, and Quentin Tarantino and Django, remember? He killed them at the end and shit. Right. Exactly. So, like, things like that. So, like, just because it's your shit doesn't necessarily disqualify it. It could still be a cameo. Okay. Okay, like like apparently now uh, in in hip hop, if all you do is have somebody yelling one or two words, it's featuring. <laughs> yeah, we could. I, I feel I'm we saying, can. Dude, we, not, don't don't get me wrong. I love MOP. I love MOP. But there's a but there's a, a a Buster song that came out. I think it was earlier on this year, or some shit like that. And all they came out was doing their typical MOP. Oh oh oh, featuring. Uh huh. I was like, you gotta be shitting me, dude. And I love MOP, yo. I was born in fucking Brownsville. I love MOP. No. You can only imagine like how much they made for that, like that. Just thinking of that get, makes it even more depressing, right? <laughs> so okay, if you come out in your own shit, it's a cameo. I still think so, yeah. Um, because the definition still rings true. Because it, in the movie, you know, it's we're obvious. talking about old paintings, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so obviously people out there, there was no TV, there was no newspapers, shit like that. Were their faces known enough for people to actually realize, oh shit, that's Raphael, that's so-and-so, that's... Yeah, in, in, in most cases, yes, because um, back then, art... We, we, we consider it fine art now, but it was just art back then. Art is art, which is art. Um, back then, art was taken in specifically by like the people who can afford it, the nobility and, and whatnot. So um, yeah, those people were recognizable, especially if, uh, yeah, if Frida Kahlo, but that's more modern in comparison, but, but yeah. So back then, the the people who would recognize it are the only pe the only audience basically. The audience was way more limited compared to now. Like, you know, now a any schmuck can see a a, a painting or a, or, a, or or a sculpture by Michelangelo. But back in the day, it's only the patrons and only the nobles that really would see it and would recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, for a commoner to see it, it 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 would be like extremely rare. So that's how the how they're recognizable and and also on top of that um they have their self portraits and whatnot and for the for the stuff that i'm going to be showing you it was during the um humanist period of, of the renaissance where people started to value more um humanity and, and in individuality and during that period you stop seeing so many paintings about christ well, and what do you mean break that down so when it comes to to um to humanity basically it was during the uh, the the high renaissance like the 15th century give or take and um it was it was what you what you would call humanist values so before that everything was was about the divine 90 percent of paintings you see jesus here mary there it's always christianity Devils, angels sins Ex right. exactly exactly so so people got tired of that. And um, this, this school of thought emerged where we started looking around ourselves and started seeing- The nobles got tired of it? Everybody in general. And- Because you and, said it was mostly the nobles that got to see shit like this, right? Yeah, exactly. And the, um, a, a new school of thought emerged where people started thinking, you know what, we, we already have beauty here. We don't have to- fantasize so much and idealize so much. And not only did that affect art, where landscapes became more more, more popular, um, you started seeing pictures of, or paintings of non-deity type people, but it also affected how people was thinking. And that sort of humanist streak, basically um, it prized like individualism and, and creativity. So, I mean, yeah, you still got to think about your patron and your audience and stuff, but you're allowed to be a little more creative, creative, and a little more like 
Because mo- most of what we 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 understand as fine art and all that stuff, most of it was commissioned by somebody else, right? Yeah, exactly. And so was it rare for these guys to like make shit because, hey, you know, this is what I love to do. This is my hobby or whatever. Or I got this idea. Just throw it up for themselves. Yeah, it, it was rare. A lot of stuff like that was basically, look how great I can draw Jesus. You should probably hire me. It was that sort of thing. Yeah. It was a resume. Basically, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's why there was such a, 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 a big stagnant period of like, that, that's, that's all you see for like, like literally a century. But once that, once that humanist um, way of thinking emerged, you start seeing different things and you start seeing different perspectives and the realism really started to take off and, and you see better angles and better like, you know, playing with distance, playing with 3D and stuff like that. Now, if they if they liked whatever was was being commissioned, would they downscale? Um, how do you mean? Well, like, uh, OK, um, a graph artist is used to painting in a in a in a ballpark. Usually what we do in Puerto Rico, it, it's it's in a, a, a baseball park on the wall going around. Yeah. Um, then all of a sudden somebody gave you a job to do a four story building. You don't forget about the smaller walls. You don't forget about the black book. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so my question is, once they got to like, uh, all right, I did a, a fresco in this cathedral. That's it. I'm not I'm not going back to doing a six by eight fucking canvas. Yeah. Um, those were more the exception than the rule. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I know like what the standard measurement and dimensions of, of stuff is, but... The majority was just wall sized, give or take. But those gigantic, gigantic shit like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. As 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 somebody who who has done graph and who knows a, a lot of graph artists, you know what I mean. I'm nowhere to the 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 scale that these guys are up now. You know what I mean. But I know of the culture and stuff like that. And the bigger and nicer we see a wall, the more we salivate. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. So yeah, I mean, for the most part. It was fairly standard as far as like the size and stuff, but those giant pieces like um, the Sistine Chapel, um, frames are like 20 by 20 and shit like that. Yeah, they exist. Yeah, you've seen them. Yeah, they're amazing. But they were more the exception than the rule, to be honest. I mean, for one, they were just like way too expensive. Look at the Sistine Chapel. It's, it's ginormous. And who's... Who, who paid Michelangelo to do it? The Pope. Like, that's how expensive it is. It takes mm-hmm. the Pope to, to afford that shit. Yeah, sure. The, the Pope called me the other day, wanted me to do some bubble letters in the Vatican. <laughs> <laughs> take, me, take me with you. Oh, I've always wanted to go to Rome. <laughs> <laughs> let's go bombing. Let's go bombing. Yeah. Yo, so, all right, so let's get... <laughs> I'll bring my... I'll, I'll bring let's my... Go, fa- let's get into the cameos, man. Let's, let's try to share this screen. You ready? In a quick second, but yes. Ay, Maria, que mucho de tala. Ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> de tala más que pintando fucking fresco. <laughs> bueno, los frescos, you got to be fast for those. So Now, what, you, what you're going to show us and share with us, yes. is this something that was just done at that time, or is it something that, that's, that like kept on for hundreds of years and like became its own thing? Um. Yes. So... It was done at that time, 15th century, por ahí, and um, they've endured the, they, they, they've endured the, the the times because stuff with the cameos is still done even today, and a lot of these paintings are still in art history books and people still talk about them even to this day. Here we go. Boom. All right. All right. So we see in this first one, correct? Yes. All right. So this is the. Arnolfini portrait by Jan van Eyck. It was made in 1434. So this is a painting of a married couple or like a couple that's about to be married, like an engaged couple, right? Can you zoom in a little bit, like like towards their faces? Absolutely. My man, that was a horrible marriage. They, they, they're not looking too happy. I mean, it, 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 there's a reason for that. You're supposed to look like serious and neutral 
it's it's looked down upon to be like too happy and too ecstatic although that became its own thing later on um is there supposed to be something in the mirror in the back ah yes there is and we're gonna jump on that in two seconds so i'm a, i only say that not because i've seen this before because you sent me these things earlier on today yeah and i'm like you know i'm gonna be honest i didn't do my 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 pre-podcast studies and stuff like that and i kind of wanted it to be a uh a surprise to myself also yeah but but if i was doing graph if i was if i was helping to do this on a wall i would automatically hide something in that mirror yeah i feel like you almost have to right yeah because it's centered it's like it's like that's the focal point exactly and that was done on purpose that was done on purpose so talking about this one super quick before we jump on the cameo um you can tell by their by their clothes or whatever they're nobles they they can afford this painting um, the uh, you see that chandelier at the top? How it has a single lit candle, just one candle that's lit. Oh fuck yeah! Back in the day, a single lit candle symbolizes the whole the, the Holy Spirit. So basically, the Holy Spirit is there, and they bless this, and He blesses this union. That, that's what that symbolizes. Um, the what does way the hat symbolizes, other than looking like Jamiroquai. <laughs> the hat the hat symbolized that it's called fashion it's called fashion holy, hunt holy fuck me for real mano yeah it's horrible um the way she's holding her dresses signifies that you know pregnancy the, the, the yeah. whole point of this is having babies the little puppy here symbolizes loyalty um why just that little bit of blue hanging out from from under her 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 dress uh basically um because of fertility, uh, the, the the dress and the way she's holding it and all that is earth, is fertile, etc. That little bit of blue is just a little bit of sky that you get. Okay. And on and on. The little puppy is, is, is loyalty. Man got to be loyal to his woman and vice versa, etc. Right? So you got a lot going on here. It's an engagement painting, but it also has a lot of symbolism. How big was that? Is, is the original? That one, I believe it's like... Close to ten by ten. Oof. Yeah, no, that that one was or, or like six. So by the, if if it's that big, there's definitely something in that fucking mirror. Exactly, and that's what we're going to now. So this mirror here in the middle, in that, the center, that green looks really. Hold on, go for, go back uh, to that green. That that looks like like a. I guess at the time, an exclusive green, an expensive, paint. Yeah. It wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me just seeing how like vibrant it is and how much it like pops. Cause it looks yeah cause, i mean because it looks muted and yet at the same time very rich mm -hmm. My exactly. bad. Go ahead, go ahead. Continue. no no you got it so basically if you focus on this mirror here you'll see the same two figures but their backs right right and and there's somebody else in the middle right exactly somebody else in the middle is the actual artist, uh, Jan Van Eyck. Oh shit. Exactly. I mean, due, due to the, the software that we're running, right, to, 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 to be able to, to do these podcasts, I see the screen smaller. I cannot wait to see the replay of this shit. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because I, I... And do you see that little bit of graffiti on the top of the mirror? Yes, sir. That says Jan Van, Jan Van Eyck was here. Really? Yeah. And oh, but we're vandals when we do it, right? Uh-huh, right. That's some bullshit. <laughs> well, he has the fancy flowery script, you know what I'm saying? It, it, you got your bubble letters, so it's kind of different. It's not the no, same. No, but you know what? I there's not at least in my in my experience, I have not met not one graffiti writer not one guy who goes out with his cans or his fat marker that has not picked up at least 12 different uh, uh calligraphy books yeah no matter how thick no matter how thin and read them from one cover to the next bro yeah you know what i mean because i've i've this is something we can do on a whole nother podcast but to me the graph writers and what gra graffiti writers are including those who go out tagging we're the new age scribes. Yeah, I can see that. We're the new age scribes. But enough of that. That's for another podcast. What else <laughs> you got? Exactly. So right here, <clears throat> we have the School of Athens by Raphael. You mentioned How big him, is right? that one. You know I'm gonna ask you for the sizes, bro, because mm -hmm. yeah, that one's the size of a wall. That one's 
big. That one's a good 10 yeah, by 50. How big of a wall? At least 10 by 20. Mm. That one's gin it's ginormous. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a fresco. So do you remember what that means? Yeah, but explain to everybody. I right, boom. So a fresco is basically just. Hey guys, those of you who do graffiti, it's going to seem weird. We're used to letting things dry <laughs> before <laughs> we paint on it again. But check this out. Go ahead. Exactly. So a fresco is just that. You got a wall, you paint on it, boom. A painting on a wall. That's all a fresco is. Now, a true fresco is when you paint on a wall that the dry the, the drywall is still wet. The, the wall is still, like, not exactly done yet. That way, when the drywall and all that dries up, the, the painting basically merges with it perfectly and... It survives for all time. Like it won't chip. It's like literally part of the wall. That won't work with uh, with aerosols, right? Mm, it has to be a specific medium. Well, I've only heard of it being done with oil paint. I, I don't know if it works with anything else. That's actually a good question. Uh, speaking of good questions, before you move on, since we're talking about the colors, Javier, what minerals do you think they use to make their paints to get to that vibrant color? Uh, well, that, that really depends on the uh, on the time period and all that. But as far as the minerals, anything from like seashells to like amethyst, fluoride, it uh, it really depends, and it depends on the on the color. And um, I mean, with the same stuff that they use for um, for material for fabric at the time, would, would I imagine they must have tried it out also at, with, as pigment for for paint. Oh, you mean like like the dyes? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember hearing about this one specific uh, shade of red. It may have been brown, but I'm sure it's red. That the only way to get it is to use this specific clay from like a specific river in like East Bumpfuck, Italy. And because of that, it just automatically became super, super expensive. I, I can... I can... As 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 a farmer, I can understand that. Yeah, you know what I mean. You you have like, in Puerto Rico, seventy eight municipalities, mm -hmm. and all seventy eight municipalities have oranges. But in one specific place, I think it's uh, La Maria. Yeah, um, they're known for their shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. You can get canepas everywhere, but canepas from the south are gonna be the best. Uh, exactly. Uh, I guess going back to the mineral mineral qualities. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, and that applies to uh, pretty much everything there. And so yeah, what's up with this, man? What are we looking at? So this one, uh, the School of Athens. It's basically um, everyone, anyone who's anyone, as far as like Western thinking and Western philosophy, they're in this. So you you got your, your you got Socrates here, you got Plato, you got a whole bunch of other. Famous smart motherfuckers whose names I don't know. Whatever, they're amazing. Uh, this one here is so rumored to be a, a, a young Michelangelo uh, sketching his um, uh, the Sistine Chapel, like getting the initial sketches started. Mm -hmm. Like it, it goes on and on. These are these are all famous. It's rumored things. to be him. Yeah, exactly. And here you have um, Socrates and pa Socrates and Plato in the middle. They're like the considered the. The Michael Jordan and Kobe of, of Western philosophy. Uh, this one is not helping me. Okay, so this one, he's over here pointing towards the sky, basically saying that heaven rules all, your, 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 your destiny is a divine thing. And this one here has his hand hovering over the ground, basically saying, nah, bro, you got to stay grounded. It's all about, you know, what you do here on earth and whatever, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, and a lot of these people weren't even, they never even like met. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if this is Michelangelo, Plato and Socrates have been dead for like, I, I'm pretty sure centuries before he was even born. So it's just like a, a who's who of all of this, you know, all put together, right? It's kind of like that 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 really tacky painting uh, where it's supposed to be like the, the dogs playing poker, but you have like, people gonna get mad, but I swear, it, I did not make this painting. You had like, <laughs> Like Malcolm, like Martin Luther King, you yeah. know, Jeff on the on the table. So it's kind of like the same thing. Just it's the philosophy table of poker. 
Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if I ask you, like, you know, name your top 20 favorite musicians across all genres, you're going to give me people from, like, all time periods. You know what I'm saying? Sandy's and, asking, what era was this made in? Uh, say what? What era was this made in? Oh, this was made in uh, 1509. So about 100 years after the, uh, well, not even, like, about 60 years after the first one we just saw. Okay. Yeah, they're all more or less from that the, the same era. So where's the cameo? Um, let's see. So uh, this guy, this guy right here, um, he is. Help me out here. Uh, I, help you out. I told you I can barely see it. I'm blind. I'm the <laughs> worst person for you to fucking be asking. That. <laughs> He's right here on the uh, on the bottom on the bottom right. Okay. That's um that's Raphael. Who is the painter who uh that dude made, made would this. have trouble in customs <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially now jesus christ have you heard it's about all that shit? <laughs> my bad yo we put up the disclaimer right? you, 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 you all are warned already yeah we put up the disclaimer right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he, he included himself in there because um, he, he's a fanboy for the for the ancient eggheads and you know what can i say well, I imagine he must have painted a lot of them, right? Um, yeah. Now, when it comes to these big pieces, painters have their assistants. Don't get me wrong. Um, even now, in like comics and manga, how you have your... much would they assist? That's I mean, what I'm saying. Because, like, uh, technically, assisting somebody who do, who's doing graffiti is just rolling the wall. Right. When look on that hollow, that technically is assisting. Oh, uh, let me get this color. Let me get the other color. And then yeah. just there put many and lata. That's actually how you well, how I started. Yeah. Well, it really depends on the artist. Even today with like manga and comics. Um it, it really depends cuz um you have your sketcher, you have your drawer, you have your 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 inker, you have your Exactly. Yeah. Trading. So exactly. And it's the same there. The same thing there. You have your you have your people that help with the sketches. It's like put down the basic lines, put down the basic colors, you know. And on top of that, you got to remember these assistants are apprentices. They're trained by the artists themselves. Mm -hmm. So so like, you know, I'm your apprentice and I'm helping well, they you have paint. skills. Not only do they have skills, but it's a skill that's very similar, if not the same as the actual artist. So it's not like, you know, you know what? That's something that that's rarely seen in graph. Right. I mean, you'll pick up tricks of the trade, like, you know, uh, put your shading here, hold your can like this, you know, uh, but like, like two graph artists, artists, because they work together, like picking up each other's style. Mm -hmm. That's 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 at least day one hip hop. No, no. Yeah. yeah. No matter who you learn from, you can learn from him. Just don't learn to be him. Exactly, yeah. Well, and that's understandable. And it's like frowned upon in the culture. But you got to remember also that as skilled as they are, they're still apprentices. They're still like learning and they haven't broken out yet. You feel me? Now, if it gets to the point where like you become your own guy, you're, you you open your own studio, and your shit looks exactly like Raphael who taught you, at that point is gonna be frowned upon and you know not so good, uh, unless you make something like totally amazing. But but yeah, and as far as how much they help, um, it just really depends on the artist. Um, some of them help twenty percent, some of them help forty percent. It, it really just. It's up to the artist's discretion, to be that honest. That you know of, have any of those apprentices turned around and, and start counterfeiting the master's uh, uh, shit? Oh, I, I, I've never heard of that. I'm sure it's happened, though. But Because, I mean, uh, uh, watching different shows, especially like the Pawn Stars and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you, you'll find out, look, man, uh, uh, counterfeiting has been, come, has been around for a long-ass time. Yeah. As long as somebody can make it, somebody can fake it. Yep, that's exactly right. Even though something like that and that big, who the fuck would want to fake something like that, bro? <laughs> right. Not I. Not what I. What you got, bro? So, the next one here, we were just talking about this. That so looks dope, and I can barely see it. That <laughs> shit looks dope. That blue looks nice. Yep, absolutely. So, the, what a lot of people don't know, the Sistine Chapel is basically 
a lot of different paintings that are all together, um, almost like a collage, right? So the Sistine Chapel isn't just one big painting on the roof of the church, right? It's an eye fuck too. It is an eye fuck. He played with a lot of shading. Stuff that you think is molding is not molding. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's him painting. That's 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 dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Everybody uh, who who has not seen it, look for it, yo. Google this shit. This shit is high skills, high skills. Exactly. My bad. Go ahead. No, you're good. So, so like I was saying, the the, the Sistine Chapel is a lot of is it, several different paintings all put together, almost like a uh, like a collage, right? So the thing in its entirety is called the Sistine Chapel, but you have your your one section called this, your one section called that. This one here is called the Last Judgment. It basically depicts uh, the the apocalypse when when Jesus comes back and the wicked are cast to hell and the 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 the, the Christians are you know made to come up into heaven, etc. Right. So you you see a lot of people on clouds. Jesus here in the center going uh uh, and mm -hmm. all these people here going oh no. And it's very miserable, very fucked up, very sad. <laughs> I love your sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they're they're. If you're if if you look look at this guy here, he's like in charge of. Um, even though this is Christian, you could see a little bit of a Greek flavor because this is supposed to be like the River Styx and the guy who uh, is on the ferry and takes the souls to the underworld, right? And. You know all these people on the boat they barely fit and i know he he has his oar to move the boat but from here it looks like he's okay, like it's a, it's a lot that's the ferry that goes from 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 puerto rico to vieques <laughs> is your does your ferryman look this cranky he look like he's about to spank motherfuckers with the orange apparently shit. everybody looks cranky before they get on that fucking ferry yeah i mean it, it it's it's taking you to eternal damnation, so it's really, <laughs> it's it's really hard to blame them. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh boy, I can't wait to go to hell. Ain't nobody, <laughs> nobody saying that, man. Let's do some bass fishing while we're at it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. What kind of river is here in the river Styx, which is blood and not water? Yeah, I wonder. So, with this one here, the the reason people paid a lot of t attention to it is, you know, because of all of that, the Christian iconog iconography and the symbolism and whatever, but also not only did Michelangelo put a, um, himself in it, a cameo, but he, he was like petty about it. Did you know that Michelangelo hated every single second that he was working on this bullshit? Yeah. I, I, I read some, I mean, do you blame him? He must have had one hell of a neck ache, yo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. claro está, tú estás acostado, you know what I mean? You're laying down, and uh, those of you who have never seen this before, we we code switch, we go from English to Spanish real quick, so <laughs> catch up. El tipo está acostado, looking up at the ceiling, painting like this. It'll still fuck up your neck, yo. You mm -hmm. got paint all up in your shit. Exactly. This was, uh, while he was working on it in 1509, this was completed around 1536. Um while he was uh, um, working on it, in 1509, he wrote a poem to his friend where he was basically complaining about the long hours laying on his back doing this. Mm -hmm. He was saying, my brush above me all the time dribbles paint, so my face makes a fine floor for droppings. So he's constantly, he's dripping paint on his face and it looks like bird shit, bro. Like, that sucks. <laughs> Have you ever painted a, a, a ceiling? No, can't like say I art, like like dude, it's a pain in the ass. And I'm I've done it in um in spray. Yeah. It's a real fucking pain in the ass, bro. Oh man. Where you gotta lie on your back like on scaffolding and shit? Well, nah, man. I was on a chair. Oh, that's even worse. I yeah. was on a chair. It's believed that Michelangelo was like on scaffolding and he had to like constantly adjust it and shit. The whole ordeal the whole ordeal was just a pain in the ass, but on top of that, how tall is that? How tall is that? Oof. Easily. I hope they put scaffolding from one side to the other. Otherwise, okay, you finished one part, one section. You can't celebrate because your ass got to go down. <laughs> take, take the scaffolding down because you're not going to be able to just haul that shit over. Be rebuild it a little bit to the side. Oh, shit. I, and you know what? I'm I'm not sure. I have to get back to you, but I think that's basically what happened. The the 
that thing must be like at least 30 feet high. And the scaffolding he's working on is a little longer than a person, like anywhere from like eight to 10 feet long, right? And however feet tall. So he finishes his section and he has to take his ass all the way down, move it somehow, if not rebuild it, like you're saying, and then work on the next section. No, and, and then do your sections uh, uh, um, organized. Cause uh -huh. like, okay, imagine, Imagine doing uh painting a human arm in two pieces. Exactly. Like yeah. doing half of it, then having to move the scaffold to then cut. Dude, I'll come in, I'll it, bro. And hell no. Exactly. So you're going to appreciate his cameo when, when I uh you know express it uh, show it in, in a second here. Yeah, because he um, thought he was in hell. So of course he's gonna put himself in there. Ah, uh, you know what? That's a good guess, but no, he's actually up here, he's closer around the middle. Really? Yeah, but 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 check it out. So Did he make himself into God, into Jesus. <laughs> no, that would have been hilarious, though. That would have been a power play, like a motherfucker, dude. Boss nah, nah. Status. Like like I told you, Michelangelo was. Um, oh, and the thing I forgot to say. So this was obviously bullshit. On top of that, Michelangelo considered sculpture higher and more divine. He considered painting, even painting of this level, lowly. Sculpture was the true divine art in his opinion. So imagine, wow, yeah, imagine doing a thing you don't even like doing under these bullshit conditions with paint dripping on you and you doing all this crap. So sounds like uh, Kroger minus the paint. Yeah, right. Basically, them bills got to get paid somehow. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. So basically, this guy here, and I will zoom in. Please do. It's Michelangelo. So here's what's going on. Um, Can this you zoom guy in a bit more on that, yeah. The skin is him. No, so oh. let me explain. So, this person is supposed to be uh Saint Bartholomew, Bar 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 Bartholomew. God, I can't talk today. So, Saint Bart, right? So, Saint Bart, like most saints, was a martyr, he died for his faith. And by dying for his faith, he got uh, he got a lot of brownie points for Christianity and was considered a saint. And now he's very important, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You, 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 you'll hear the story a million times. Motherfuckers getting eaten by lions, motherfuckers getting shanked by Romans, et cetera, et cetera, right? So St. Bart was skinned alive. He was literally skinned alive with real blades and everything. And that's what he's holding right here. He's holding his um, skin that that's was, it. yeah, that was very painfully and very forcibly removed while he was still alive. I, I really can't emphasize that enough. Fuck. And obviously nobody knows what St. Bart really looks like. I mean, we, we didn't have cameras back then. So Michelangelo said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to put my face on it i'm gonna donate my face to this guy because i would rather get skinned alive than fucking keep doing this bullshit. <laughs> hold on we got something from here from sandy wait so i googled it painted like the rest of us standing up ah uh, the pope insisted that the work do not disturb religious services get the fuck out of here are you serious so michelangelo couldn't use the standard scaffolding Wow. Wow. That's messed up. So yeah, yeah, it was it was the more I the, the more I find out about it, the worse it gets. And and you have to remember again, he doesn't like painting or, or he doesn't think much of it. And Michelangelo was like like uh, was it because of the money? Like how we like like what we first started talking about? Was it because of the money? Do you get paid more for, for sculpting? No, no, it's just a matter of opinion. He considers it closer to divinity and closer to like showing or depicting whatever. It's like it, it, it's like saying, like you, you, you think realism looks better or is better than modern art, and he basically just feels the same way. Like painting is lowly. That shit's now, now. Why in the fuck do you always put those words in my mouth? Because <laughs> <laughs> you said we're really gonna go there again. I mean, I'm ready. You can just do it. You Why can't not? say that. You can't say that, dude. Fucking. All right, let's 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 handle this shit. I'm gonna uh -huh. say it once and for all, but I think we we went through the same shit on the first 
art about stuff uh, uh, episode, dude. We we go through this like I Abstract think every episode and a lot of stuff that are using in what's called modern art is in wild style. Right, I, I, I'm the one who told you that. No, you weren't. I'm the one who told you. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, sir. I'm the one who told you. A lot of the stuff that you can find in modern art, you can find in graffiti. And and then you came to your, and then, hold on, you brainwashed yourself. Really? And, uh, hold on, and you made yourself think, oh, a lot of that shit is in liquid style. I came up with this, and John was just there looking cute. Like, that's, that's, just, that's just how your brain works. First I don't of all, know. I would never say you're there looking cute. That that's a lie. That just wouldn't <laughs> fucking happen. Second of all, no, bro. <laughs> you can't go from that to what everything ended up with, which was, you know, a canvas with a line going through it. I do that on a wall, man. They fucking pelt spray cans at me, man. Yeah, no doubt. So, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't a money thing. It was just a personal preference thing. He considered painting lowly and sculpture was closer to divinity, like literally. And One of the best ever. Yeah, like yeah, he, he was good at it, extremely good at it. And yeah. yes, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, he ain't really think much of it. But um should be cray. You got, and you got anything else? Any other I, I believe I have one or two more. Let me check real quick. Hold on. I just wanted to uh see your face while I told you that you were full of shit and lying like oh, you always do. Fuck did. you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, we see this? Okay. So, yeah. Um, he put his face on the guy who got skinned alive because fuck this job and fuck the Pope. And that's basically what he felt back then. Right. And, okay. So, get my notes here. That's a painting, bro. That's a painting, bro. Oh, please zoom into that. <laughs> please. Yeah. Look, at the, look, look at the glass. It's the shit that always makes me forget uh, to breathe. All right. Yeah, look at that, look at that. Yeah, I'm a sucker for um, for glass in like oil paintings. I always I always catch myself staring at it. The cheese, everything, man, that shit looks dope. Yeah, me da hambre, no doubt. Look at that, look at the detail on the, on the knife. Yes, I feel yeah. like, like, like something was lost with, with, with the cookies or biscuits or whatever the fuck those things are supposed to be <laughs> yeah so this one is called still life it's a long unnecessary fucking title but it's called still life with cheeses almonds and pretzels like i can't fucking see this shit and it was okay. made and it was made around 1615 um and uh this one was made by a a female painter which was was kind of rare back then. Her name was Clara Peters, and she was Dutch. And just like I find it funny because you know people be complaining about how oh kids nowadays you're so weird for taking pictures of your food and posting it on Facebook or whatever. But literally back in the day, you would do, people would do paintings of like the same thing essentially and call it still lives. This is a still life and all that. So, there is a, and I do have one more after this, but anyway, there is a cameo here. In the glass? It is. Where else are you going to reflect it out of? <laughs> right here. Really? The little, you see how I got like the little metal lid? Yeah. Okay, so we zoom in. Just barely, you can see her face in there. Can you zoom in on that? Yes. Woof. Just barely, right? Yeah, so right there. How what big I really, is that piece? Huh? How big is that piece? Uh, this one, I don't know. Um, I wasn't able to find it. Um, I, believe, I, mm, I don't think it's like wall sized. It's a pretty standard piece. Maybe eight by, um, eight by 12 or something like that, but I really don't know, to be honest. Eight feet by 12 feet or eight inches by 12 inches? No, eight feet. Wow. Yeah. No, it's, it's big regardless. I mean, you, you kind of have to go like that to get that amount of insane detail on it. You know what I'm saying? 
That is amazing. Yeah. And what was her name again? Um, Clara uh, Peters, but it's P E E T E R S. And when, um, if you know, when, when, when did the first uh, um, documented, I guess, if you want to call it that, um, female uh, painter come out? The first one. Mm. Not sure. Yeah, battery is running low. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, give me one second here. Hold on. Guys, you see what you see what I got to deal with? Okay, my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying to have this podcast abruptly end and shit. But anyway, um, the uh, first one, I don't know. That's a that's a great question. Everybody is on. Da Vinci's dick and Michelangelo and all these people that I, I, I honestly don't know. We'll have to look that up. Uh, okay. Google. Oh, also, check this out. You Is remember that? Still life painted in oils on a wooden panel. 34.5 centimeters by how much is that in inches? Wait, the, this one right here? Yeah. Oh wow, it's smaller then. Okay. Yeah, I have to definitely start taking notes on the dimensions of shit for, for future episodes. Um, check this out. Instead of just signing her name in the corner, she quote unquote carved it on this metal knife here. Let's add this to the stream. Really? Yeah, you could I don't know if you can see it, but look, it's like carved. Clara Peters. Oh shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So as as far as all the, the, the I mean, what is the, the name of the of a female artist that, that that most stands out? Like have they have had were any of the frescoes or masterpiece sculptures done by women? Mm, not the famous ones. Um, as far as Renaissance artists, um, I admit I'm a, a, a it little. It wasn't allowed, or or it just. Um, they, they they weren't into it. Yeah, they weren't into it. it, it it's not that it wasn't allowed. Let's see Although, what Sandy has here. Yeah, Artemisia Lomi was an Italian Baroque painter. Initially, were you? really. Wow. Uh, Caravaggio is one of my favorites, too. Yeah, well, there you go. We should, um, we should do an episode on uh, uh, famous female painters from, from the day that got overshadowed by their male contemporaries, like Da Vinci and whatnot. The, right now in the world, there are a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the, the really, really high-end tattoo artists are women. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so I'm surprised. Not even well, there has to be. It's just that we don't know of them that have done a, a some type of a fresco or a cathedral or. Oh yeah, I'm I'm sure I'm sure we just have to. And if not, ladies, go out there and paint a fucking cathedral, man. Hold up your end of the deal. What's up? <laughs> yeah, for real, definitely, absolutely. We have a question here from Sandy. What's Caravaggio? Oh, Caravaggio. He's a he's a painter. He, um, from the same era. And he's known for his uh, uh, tenebrism, which is basically tenebrism. It, it basically means instead of a gradual um, movement of light and shadow, like you, you could see it gradually. Um, his style was basically like, you know, here you have light and then no gray, fuck gray, boom, black shadow. So it's very like impactful, very, um, very dramatic. So he has scenes where it's like the background is like full black and you see like the person and just like heavy shadow and very like dramatic, dramatic shit. And that was basically Caravaggio's style and what he was known for. All right. Yeah, that, that, that I've seen that done on walls with like uh, uh, letters and stuff like that. And it helps certain part of the letters just pop out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do things that are just completely opposite. Like, um, Though the, the old color of the Lakers, the purple and gold, mm -hmm. two colors that really shouldn't be seen next to each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yet, 
in 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 certain works of art, it fucking works magnificently. Yeah, and and the stuff you still see today, like um, look at a a, a Spawn comic. Uh, uh, what's his name? Mc, Mc, McFarland. McFarland. Yeah, his style borrows a lot from Caravaggio. He has, you know, um, he'll he'll draw a person. And they just have just like big, just blocks of just black shadow on them. And it creates this like very dramatic, um, sometimes ominous um, visage basically. And you still see that today. Like there's nothing gradual about it. It's just heavy shadow, heavy shadow. Yes. And it looks, it looks cool. Yeah. I mean, sometimes things can get lost if, if not applied, you know, what? fuck. I don't remember the name of it. I'm going to see if uh, for the next episode I can find it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I saw it in the museum here in Cincinnati. Okay. It was very dark to a point where it looked like, like, like almost like it was done in, in oil, but like oil, oil, burnt car oil, and then yeah. smudged downwards. And when you got close to it, you could see there were a lot more details in the silhouette of the person. But three feet away from it, it was like it was lost. It could be the age of it. You know, I think it was like on 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 wood or something like that. Exactly. I'm yeah. almost sure it was it was in Cincinnati. It was in the Cincinnati Museum. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that. But um, but yeah, no, I definitely um definitely like Caravaggio's style. Um, I named my dog Rembrandt. If I ha if I get another one, I should name him Caravaggio. Call him Carvey or something. I don't know. You can help me out with that. Really? You want me to help you out with a name for your dog? I, I, I want you to help me with a... You know what? Yeah, you're right. I take it. No! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I'll take it back. <laughs> I, I'll take it back. I, I won't even tell you if I got a new dog. You, you'll you never find out. <laughs> Yo. All right, guys. We're go We're towards the end of the show. Um, Once again, Torre del Viejo uh pr787 at gmail write to us or just contact us through uh facebook give us your ideas anything you want us to touch on i'm gonna break it i'm gonna start it off with this john we need a podcast on women in in art in fine art i'm talking masterpieces what can you get for us you can get something for us no i could get something no doubt definitely we should do that that'll probably be the next one i like it i like it that'll be fantastic Everybody out there, Joey Zaza, John Matos, this is Art About Stuff coming to you from Torre del Viejo. Thank you for tuning in, yo.